Well, I have a praise report. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My husband, uh, Wayne, will be coming home today. Uh, but the doctor said it will be constant care and therapy. But he will come home. Uh, and when he does, he'll still see more doctors and go through some therapy. But he's alive, church. It was not his time to go. God is good, isn't he, church? He is. And I thank you all for your prayers of faith, for your words of comfort and joy. You don't know how much it meant to me to know that you were standing right beside me. I thank God for each and every one of you. We are all prayed up and ready for whatever is coming our way. Amen. And then it made me think uh, of my vision. I always think out loud. It is something the Holy Spirit uh, has uh, myself and my brother Preston do here lately. And now a lot of the church is doing it. And I am proud and blessed by each and every one of you that are taking the time to think out loud. While thinking out loud this morning, I thought about the vision. The vision that I had, and I'm never going to forget it, that I saw my living room with a black ceiling and the walls were white. And I saw the two doors in there and the way the curtains were and the carpet. And now it's been finished. And I was waiting for my next level. And I was told by the angel of the Lord in the vision, because in the vision, when I saw the room, I refused to do the work. I told the angel of the Lord, I'm not going to paint that ceiling. I'm not going to do that work. I don't want to do that work. And I even said to the angel of the Lord, you want me to lay that carpet? And he said, no, I don't want you to do anything. This is your work. You have to do this. No one can help you. You have to do this to move to your next level. And I even asked the angel of the Lord in the vision, why do I got to move to a next level? I mean, I like the level that I was on. I was happy where I was with God. I was being blessed. Everything was going my way. I was basking in the glory. I didn't want to move up. And even when I talked with Brother Preston about the vision, he said, uh, the vision is up to you. It is all about you moving to a new level with God. No one can make you do it. It's certainly something that you have to accept. And when he found out that I had started painting, he said it had to be the will of God. If it was not the will of God, you never would have started painting. And finally, I had finished the room according to the vision. But I was certainly warned ahead of time. Wouldn't I, church? I mean, if you just sit right here and you just start thinking out loud, you all are a witness. I mean, you can truly say God does have a great cloud of witnesses around us. You are a witness. I did not know what the vision meant. I just knew that it was I was going to move to a new level with God. And it was going to be hard. and It was going to be a lot of work for me. I mean, a lot of work. And now I find out that uh, my husband had that stroke. He's going to need constant care, help getting in and out of bed, therapy, all the medication they have him on. Oh, my goodness, the medication. Lord, I bind that enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over that enemy in the name of Jesus. That is not the report that I will accept. I'm accepting that he will be delivered from all of that medicine and all of those doctors in Jesus Christ's most holy name. I am praying and believing God for deliverance. I'm not accepting that that's going to be his life. The devil is a liar, church. I am believing God for the best. But I certainly am prayed up. And this is something I know. Today, I know that I know that I know. And there's power in knowing. That was something the Holy Spirit of God said to me many years ago. There is power in knowing. And I agreed with him. There is power in knowing. 
that you know, that you know, that you know. And what I know today is my Jesus is holding my hand. And I will never let his hand go. And I know that he will never let my hand go either. And I am thankful for my walk with God. I am thankful for everything that God has done and will do. I give him all the praise. I give him all the glory and all the honor. Because it is not by my might. It is not by my power. It is not by my strength. But it is by the Spirit of the Lord. I take a no credit for anything, but I am thankful for this church. I am thankful that the grace of God that is in me has been enough. It truly is enough that even in our weakness, God is strong. The grace of God is strong. And it does reveal the truth of us when we are in times of crisis in times of suffering. But I want you to know something, church. I won the victory through my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. The thief came in to kill, steal, and destroy. But my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, has come that I might, that we might have life, abundance of life. Therefore, that's the reason why of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God, of the former and the later reign in the last days. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It's the outpouring of more of his grace upon us in times of trouble, in times of crisis. God is always there to catch us at any time. At least we stumble and fall. God is there to lift us up and carry us on. Because the Holy Spirit of God told me many, many years ago, it doesn't matter how you run the race, but that you ran. It doesn't matter if you're first or last, but that you finished the course. And at the end, you will obtain a prize. And I always think about that when I'm under attack and how the enemy's moving and trying to work against us and stop us as he does on a daily basis. It's not how we ran the race. If we were first or last. But that we stay the course and we finish the race to obtain the prize. Amen. That's what it's about. And I thank God that he has always been right there with me. The Holy Spirit of God, since all of this has happened, has not failed to remind me every morning in prayer, I am here. Lord, don't let me cry because I don't want to cry. And I thank the Holy Spirit. For he truly is a comforter, isn't he, church? He will comfort us because he loves us so much. And I am thankful for that love. I am. I thank God for the love of God. I do. I thank God every day for it. I thank God for strength, for his love, for his mercy, and for his grace. And I thank him for the saints, those that are willing to stand with you, to stand in the gap, to have faith, to pray for you, to lift you up to the Father. That's how it works, church. Faith moves God every time I know the power of prayer 
the power of intercessory prayer. The power of not praying in the flesh, but moving into the spiritual realm of God to go into heavenly places and take the fight to the enemy. And that's what the enemy hates. See, the enemy would love to keep us in the physical and the fleshly realm because you are of no value. <laughs> Your weapons are not fleshly. If we try to render evil for evil and battle the enemy with our flesh, he knows that we cannot win. It is a battle that we cannot win. You can wrestle with them all day long, but you're not going to defeat them. You will only defeat the enemy. When you put off that flesh, you have to put it off, church. You have to put it off. And you have to put on the garment of praise. You have to put on the garment of the whole armor of God. You are putting on the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ when you do that. But the enemy doesn't want you to know that. That's when you become powerful. Now you're a threat. Now the enemy knows you can bruise his head. Because you have now entered into the spiritual realm where God has equipped you with everything that you need, prepared you for this spiritual warfare. Where the spiritual realm is right there with you. They were waiting for you to take up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and then all of heaven is moving on your behalf. The wheels of heaven are moving once you learn how to walk in the Spirit, to pray in the Spirit, to move more spiritual. It is spiritual growth. And you're going to get there, church, because I'm going to help you. And so is the Holy Spirit of God because I know how to get there. I know how to move in that spiritual realm with God. God will open the doors of heaven for you and welcome you into that spiritual realm through the doors of faith, through the flesh of the body of Jesus Christ. Can we go boldly to the throne of grace? Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Christ has consecrated that way and made it holy for you and I through his sacrifice body, the blood of the Lamb of God that washed us, redeemed us, and cleansed us from all our sins and unrighteousness. Church, I will always bring you back to the blood of the Lamb of God to remind you of how powerful that blood is. There is power in the blood of the Lamb of God. Only, only through Jesus can we do anything. Only through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he prepared the way. He ordered our steps. He conquered hell, grave, death for you and I. We are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. That's our victory. Our victory is that our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, has conquered all enemies of God and the church. Therefore, we are more than a conqueror. Our victory is through him. And only through him do we have this victory. But God wants you to know that the spirit within you, the soul within you that has been redeemed and born again can enter at any time through the veil of the flesh of Jesus Christ. And you can go boldly into that spiritual realm with God where he wants you to battle against spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of darkness, principalities, powers. Now you're dangerous. Now you're a threat. Because when you were walking in the flesh, you were no threat to them. But once you left that body, that fleshly body, you put it off as if it were a garment, a filthy garment. And you put on that clean garment that's been redeemed, washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. And now you're walking in the Spirit. 
You're moving in the spirit. You have spiritual discernment by eating the words of God. God is building up an army, church. A spiritual body. You see, this body is not what we will fight this enemy with. We have a new body. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4, which is eternal in the heavens. Now thinking out loud. This is me thinking out loud early this morning, and I want your feedback. I want to know what you think. What do you think about this? What is being raised? When it, when First uh, Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 tells us that uh, those which are dead will be raised, and those which are alive will be caught up and be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Well, 1 Corinthians tells us that the body that goes into the grave is not the body that will be raised. We know that by Christ had a new body. They didn't recognize him if it wasn't for the holes in his hands. And the piercing, they would not have recognized him. Get back with me and let me know. What is being raised? Corinthians tells us that we have a new body. It says if the tabernacle of this earthen body were dissolved, we'd have a house, a home eternal in the heavens made without hands. If we have an eternal body already prepared for us in the heavens, and Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, for in my Father's house are many mansions. What is being raised from the grave? Now we know Ezekiel 37 talks about the dry bones, and will these dry bones live again? But that's the dry house of Israel, and he's talking about the dryness of their spiritual uh, nature, that uh, they will live again. But what? I want to know. Because I'm thinking out loud. What body is being raised? Is it the bones? What is being raised from the grave? If I have an eternal body in the heavens that were made without hands, then what is being raised from the dead? What's in the ground? That's my question today. And I want to know. Because I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know that. And I want to know. So think out loud today, church. Have a blessed and victorious day today in Jesus Christ. Most holy name we pray and let the church say amen and amen. I thank God for your love, your prayers. I thank God for each and every one of you. What a blessing you are to me. And I thank God for you. I love you, church. I do. I love you more than words can say. Have a blessed day today, my dear, dear, precious friends. And get back with me and let me know on that because I'm, I want that answer. I want to know what is being raised. If the body that went into the earth is not the body that is raised, and if there's a new body that's eternal in the heavens, and Christ went away to prepare a place, a mansion, and in my Father's house are many mansions, what is coming up out of that grave? Why does First Thessalonians 4 and 16 tells us that at the voice of the trumpet, the dead in Christ will be raised? What? I, I, I can't answer that, so I want to know. I'm going to stop there. Get back with me. Tell me what you're thinking out loud. I love you, church. Have a blessed day.